In the aftermath of the bloodletting called the Civil War, thousands of ruthless, restless, searching men traveled west. Such a man is William Colton. Like the others, he carried a blanket roll, a proficient gun, and a dedication to a new chapter in American history, the opening of the West. You're very pretty, honey, you know that? Very pretty. Give me another one. Oh, come on, now you've had enough, Jody. Don't tell me when I've had enough, or too much, or not enough. Look at that. Well, shut my mouth. <laughs> well, look at this. Guess who I am? I'm Robert E. Lee. That's who I am, Mr. Robert E. Lee. <laughs> Hey, mister, you know what this is? I know what it was, son. Just what would your name be, Mr. Wise Man? Are you deaf, mister? I asked you what your name was. My name is Nichols. First name is Ab. That's a uh, gray you're wearing, ain't it? Why? Why? <laughs> hey, he wants to know why. Well, I'll tell you why, mister. Why, you ain't so smart after all, are you? I like to know what side a man's on. What side are you on, mister? Oh, I have no side, son. I just walk the fence and hope there'll be no strong wind. Uh-huh. You fought in a war, didn't you? What outfit was you in? 18th Brigade. 18th Brigade. My brother was in the 18th. 18th uh, Connecticut. Was you in Connecticut, mister? I asked you a question, mister. Was you in Connecticut? 18th? Texas Volunteer Infantry, Confederate States of America. Now, what'll be your pleasure, Sonny? I think my pleasure would be to find out just where you place your allegiance now. To the Union? Or to, to this rag here? I'm a practical man, son. I don't owe allegiance to a ghost. And that's what the Confederacy is now. It bled to death in a couple of hundred battles. But an affection, a respect for it, I'll carry this to my grave. Satisfy you, does it?
anybody ever tell you you were a filthy little animal? Let him be, kid. He just got out of a prison camp. He's weak as a kitten. I'm not soliciting any help. That's my flag he did that to. You pick up that flag, son, and clean it off. You make that sound like an order, mister. Who are you? You got the rank to back up an order? My name is Colton. My last name is William. <clears throat> My rank, I turned in a month ago. I don't owe any allegiance to that flag either, but too many good men died for it to let me sit by and see it get desecrated by a dirty little loudmouth who had no hand in bringing it down. A loudmouth who was still sucking milk and candy drops while this flag was in the breeze. Man can't help being too young to fight in a war. That's right. And a lick it up boy is no judge of those who did. Now, just what are you going to do about it? It's what you're going to do about it. You're going to get down on your hands and knees and clean up that flag. <laughs> I wouldn't hold my breath about it if I was you, mister. I won't. <laughs> now pick it up! Now clean it off! Wipe it. Now fold it. Fold it carefully. Give it to the gentleman over there. into the air. I want to hear it. I'm sorry! Mr. Colton? I'm obliged, sir. No need to be. Flag dies out of the man, doesn't it? Yeah, it appears so. Hey, mister. That boy Merriman, uh, he's kind of an itchy kid. Pretty handy with a gun. Just watch yourself. Uh, thanks. You didn't figure I'd wait for you? I didn't give it a thought one way or the other. Gonna stand there, son, and look fierce? Uh, you got something on your mind. You sure press a man, don't you? Men sometimes, but boys, never. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you the same terms you gave me. Now you apologize and we'll call it even. That's all it takes, huh? <laughs> all right, it'll take me a little while to sober up. I'll meet you up on Rogers Hill in about an hour. We'll draw up there, fair and square. Listen, I don't want to stand on a killing. You want an apology, huh, kid? All right, you got it. 
I'm sorry that I ruffled up your feathers. Does that do it? Now, I want to hear you admit you was wrong. Am I going to hear that from you? Not this year. All right, then. I'll be up in Rogers Hill in an hour. Will you? I'll be there. That's your pleasure. Mr. Colton. Mr. Colton. It was all the same to you, sir. I'll be your second. I'd like to be around to help. All right. Jump on that hill over there. Yeah, now. All right, I'll be there. Boy, it's a hot sun. Good day for a man to die. Wouldn't know the difference. to do. Nothing else to do save shoot a man. Make that a boy. A boy. A boy. Let's go! feeling. It happens to me, too. Mr. Colton! Mr. Colton! Mr. Colton! Mr. Colton! Colton! Mr. Colton! Colton, it's all over with. The war's over with. Lee just surrendered at Appomattox. 
The war's over. Thank God. It's all done. Must lay down our arms now. It would appear to me, Captain, that it was about time. Mr. Colton, it appears to me that it's about time. You ready, Mr. Colton? All right, we go out there. Stand back to back, walk 15 paces, turn, draw, and fire. Let's do it, Mr. Colton. Real anxious, isn't he? Very. When they're that age, they usually are. <laughs> Where'd you say he was? 16, 17? Not any older. How old would you say he was, sir? 16, 17? Not any older. The older. Thanks to me, no older. Oh. Uh. Sergeant, get a stretcher bear here right away. Yes, sir. Stretcher bear! Quick. Get a stretcher bear over here! Stretcher bear! You ready now, Mr. Colton? I'm ready. All right, 15 paces, and I'll count them off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Captain, I was looking for you. I missed you at mess tonight. One of the men said he saw you walking over. Belong to you. First man you ever killed? First boy. Yeah, I know the feeling. I've killed a hundred times that boy just by signing my name to a piece of paper. That's what I found after 25 years in uniform. Man carries his wars around with him like a knapsack. He never lets loose. He tries, but he never lets loose. He gets pictures in his head. And for a soldier, they're just as much general issue as his boots. Well, that'll be the picture in my head, Colonel. A 16-year-old kid skewered on a sword like a piece of meat. 
And if I'd done that five minutes ago, it would have been murder. The difference being a place called Appomattox. Two generals and a signed piece of paper. Colton, I want to talk to you about your plans. You're due for a majority and, uh, and a medal, if I can swing it. No, not just for this afternoon, for lots of afternoons. I assume you're hanging on to your commission. Well, I was, sir, uh, until this afternoon. I'm turning in my commission, Colonel. I'm resigning from the Army. Colton! You're West Point. You're 12 years cavalry. All that to be chucked away because of one dead Confederate boy? The next death that I have a hand in, the next killing, if ever I have to kill again, I want it personal. I want to be able to choose. If some boy has to die in my hands, I don't want it sanctioned by an act of Congress, or my regrets ended by an armistice. And you'll go where? Well, I'm not sure. I think West. Yeah, I've been thinking about it some. Try to get the cannon smoke out of my eyes, noise out of my ears. Maybe some of the uh, pictures out of my head. A killing is a killing, Mr. Colton. And a death is a death, with or without bugles. Well, I guess I'd like to find that out for myself. Sir. It's a nice clean hole. Good safe distance from the heart. Son, you got two places to go. First to a doctor to get that cleaned out, then to a minister to thank the good Lord that you're still breathing. You could have gone six inches lower. You could have killed me. You had your chance. What happened? I had my chance once before. I am too, Mr. Colton. That nobody died this afternoon. You got a home, Nichols? State of Georgia. I'm on my way. What about you? Where is home? West. Just west. And I'm on my way, too. 